The other beauty of this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal didn't say fi sudurihim maradun. He said fi qulubihim maradun. There's a big difference between sudur and qulub. Let me explain that to you. When, I think most of you know Surah An-Nas. Alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur nas We don't say alladhi yuwaswisu fi qulub nas We say alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur nas If it said qulub nas you would have translated the one who whispers in the hearts of people. That's not what it says. It says the one who whispers in the chests of people. Now there's a difference between the heart and the chest. The chest is actually a dharf, it's a place. The thing inside this place, the treasure inside this place is the heart. Shaitan has access not to your heart. Shaitan has access to your chest. Think of the, ch- the, the, the heart as your home. And think of the chest as the fence around your home, the front porch, the backyard. Shaitan has access to your property, but he can't walk in until you open the door. You understand? The heart is your home and that's locked. You can't let him in. But he will come and knock. Hey, hey, you want to listen to something? Hey, I got something for you. People, our, our job is to sense when shaitan is knocking on our hearts. Because he's close, he's in the chest. He is in the chest. And he will whisper in the chest. And when someone's knocking on the outside, can it be heard inside? Can it be? Yeah. And the thing is, sometimes when people knock, you can shoo them away, and sometimes people knock, and what happens? You open the door. If you open the door enough times, he moves in. He just moves in. And when an outsider moves in, they start redecorating the place. You understand that, right? And so what happens is, if you don't let him in, you have your own sense of what is beautiful. You have your own sense of what is good, and what is not, which colors are nice, what furniture is nice. But when you let the intruder move in, you come one day and the walls are pink and the furniture is green. You know, and all the plates are purple. And what just happened here? Well, this is my, sta- my taste, this is what I like. You know, he's turned the, the kitchen into a living room and the bathroom into a guest room. And you're like, what is going on here? Why am I telling you this? Because if you let shaitan inside of your heart, inside of that home, then what used to be beautiful becomes ugly. And what used to be ugly becomes beautiful. And that's why Allah says, وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمُ Shaitan beautified their deeds for them. Shaitan cannot make anything ugly beautiful to you until he is where? Inside of your hearts. Now if you don't let shaitan in your heart, what is still in your heart? Iman. وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ حَبَّبَهُ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ He beautified iman in your hearts. You understand this imagery? Now Allah says here, في قلوبهم مرضون In their hearts there's a disease. Uh oh, this is a problem. Because it's not limited outside to the chest, now it's made its way into the heart. Now if an intruder comes into your heart, into your home, what are you supposed to do? As soon as you realize this was a bad idea, you're supposed to kick him out. So sometimes we do listen to shaitan, don't we? Sometimes we do open the door. And the moment your realization hits you, what should you do? أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ You seek refuge, you kick him out. You push him away. That's what you're supposed to do. But if you allow him to stay in, and you allow him to cook his way, and you allow him to stink up the place, then you know what? You're gonna start getting sick. You're gonna start getting sick. And this, this, by the way, this imagery is gonna come full circle a few ayat later. We're gonna find, وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ So now there's a disease inside of their hearts. The thing is though, Allah empowered every single human being in ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Shaitan was told to his face, my slaves, you will have no authority over them. He cannot force his way into your heart and he cannot force his way to stay. The moment you say get out, he has to get out. So if you let him in and you let him stay, that's not because he has control, it's because you never kicked him out. And if you refuse, Allah gave you every tool possible to kick him out. Just say, A'udhu Billah. Just make istighfar. He'll be gone. That even in the month of Ramadan, when the shayateen, what happens to them? They're chained. They've done such a redecoration inside of you that you're operating as though he's still there. He's, he's autopilot. Shaitan's not there, but you're doing his work anyway. Because they're shayateen al-insi. Well, jinn. You ever wonder why Allah says they're shayateen, they're devils of the human beings and the jinn? There are devil, devils that are jinn, obviously. But how can devils be human? 
You know the human beings who let shaitan inside and let him stay for a long time? They become them. They convert. They just become shayateen. Subhanallah. Allah says about these munafiqoon that they have a serious disease inside of their hearts. And their disease, by the way, that disease isn't just doubt. That disease was also cowardice. They were cowards. They weren't willing to stand up for this religion. And I told you, their hypocrites cannot be compared to our time. But we have a similar problem. Not the same problem, but certainly a similar problem. There are going to be three reactions to Islam even today. There are going to be people who say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they will take pride in it and they will see it their honor that they're Muslim and no matter what, nothing is above Allah's word. Nothing is above the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The obedience to them is supreme. That guidance is beyond criticism and they believe that in their heart of hearts. Even when they make mistakes, they know the mistakes are theirs. They can be flawed, they can be mistaken. The deen of Allah is not mistaken. The deen of Allah has no problems. The deen of Allah has no criticism. On the other extreme, you will get people who absolutely hate Islam and the Muslims. You're gonna get those people. They're gonna be on the other extreme. And guess what you're gonna get in between? We should have a little bit of compromise. We should, I mean, we don't have to be that, I mean, stern in our belief in the Quran. I mean, we could take things lightly a little bit. After all, it is 2016. We have to just, you know, go, go with the times a little bit. That reaction of let's just kind of work both out a little bit. Because, you know, if you really truly believe, you might become too extreme. So we have to balance both sides. That's actually a byproduct of that original hypocrisy that used to exist back then. <laughs> Our deen, by definition, is already balanced. Thank you very much. You don't have to come in and offer it your version of balance. It's already got the best of this world and the next balanced for us by Allah Himself. So when you come along and I come along and say, you know what, let's balance, let's have a balanced approach to Islam. <laughs> uh, is there some new balance that you just came up with? Or is it your own cowardice, your fear? You don't want people to look at you funny. You're too afraid of them. You want to look good in, in terms of PR. You just want to you know, you know, suck up to the people around you. And your, your own low self-esteem is now being imposed onto Islam, to this religion. That will happen now too. So as we study this, we have to actually kind of look in the mirror too. About you know, what kind of mentality towards this religion we carry. Oh, thanks to Allah.